Hi, welcome to Off The Tee. I'm your host, Jared Levy. Today we're at Lacoma Golf Course in East Dubuque, Illinois. We'll be meeting with Paula Ketchum, the new head golf professional. She's gonna get me fitted for a new driver in the simulator and then give us a few tips on the range. Let's check it out. Hi, we're here today at Lacoma Golf Course and we're joined with Paula Ketchum, head golf professional. Paula, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, tell us about uh, your path in golf and how long you've been here. I've been here at Lacoma since January 16th of this year. My path is, I started golf probably about five years old. My dad was head professional at Twin Pines Golf Course in Cedar Rapids for 32 years. So, and my cousins golf, one of them was a golf professional. So it's a family, kind of a family sport. So grew up in Cedar Rapids area, golfing, started competing when I was 13 around the whole state of Iowa. Played high school golf, went to Iowa State for a year, went back to college at age 35 and finished my college and played NAIA at Mount Mercy College in Cedar Rapids. And then when I graduated, um, I moved to Oregon to become a, uh, a counselor and I ended up being a golf pro instead. Worked at uh, three courses in Oregon. The last one was, um, I was there for 12 years teaching, just teaching. So I did some other head professional. I did that one time an assistant, but teaching has been my passion. Okay, and I'm told we're gonna, after this interview, we'll go in there and you'll show me a few things on the simulator. Mm -hmm. um, so how's everything been since you've joined Lacoma? It's been great. This is, uh, this fulfills everything that I want to do. I'm learning club fitting, uh, that side of the business, which is something I've shied away from, I guess, maybe um, just for no other reason than it's just uh, a little intimidating. But I'm very much enjoying learning about that. I, I think that it makes me a better instructor if I have a better knowledge of clubs and so I can help somebody in different ways and it's just a lot of fun. It's just, it's, it's great. And I like the facility. The, the people that I work with are awesome. We have a great team. Um, I'm very happy here. Nice, and um, we kind of touched on the, the simulator and club fitting. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about the facilities here and um, what Lacoma has to offer in terms of the simulator and all the changes that they've recently made. Okay, so Lacoma, put in three simulators um, we just have the one up now and that's for club fitting but in the in the winter they have three of them and so we're busy we're a very busy facility people come in and they play the games we have leagues we offer food and drinks so it's it's a uh, it's a very happen happening place here we do have the simulator the, th the third one and that's where I teach and that's where I do club fitting in the winter and so we have the HD technology where when a player is hitting, I can look at the numbers and determine, say, for example, why your ball's always going to the right. I can look at the data, understand what's happening, and then give you um, some tips on how to change that and then also on how to practice. So it's a very upscale, data-driven facility. And so that is just, that's what makes, kind of sets it apart, is being able to have that equipment and use it and being able to help people get better. That's our goal is to help people get better. All right, well, with the summer season starting off, uh, what can golfers look forward to here at Lacoma? So Lacoma has 45 holes. We have the blue, which is 18 holes. We have the red and gold, which are both nine. You can put them together and make it an 18, and we have the par three. And so there's a lot of events that are happening every, every week. We have leagues. We have couples leagues on Friday nights if you want to do a couples league. We have um, some ladies leagues on Thursdays morning and afternoon. We just finished the big cup tournaments on the blue and the gold. So every holiday there's something. 
going on. There's there's really a lot here for any anybody. Anybody that wants to have a, a league or some a time that you're gonna play every week and it's it's secured and you've got people to golf with, this they've got something to offer for everyone. Nice. Well um I'm sure it's going to be a very busy summer, and I'm mm -hmm. sure Lacoma's uh, excited to have you here on board. And let's get in and take a look at the simulator. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Stick around. We'll be right back after these messages. Okay, so we're here in the simulator, and um, I think we're going to work on getting me fitted for a driver. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, see what that process is like. Let's get started. Okay, so tell me a little bit about what your current driver does. What does it go right, left, or straight? What do you, what do you? Uh, little fight? of each. Okay. No, but uh, normally it's um, the good shots are pretty straight, and most often it kind of fades. The bad shots tend to slice, and then if for you know the really one-off is, it will go right to left. Okay. Uh, that's an accident. Anytime that happens, it means I just completely miss miss hit and hit a hook. Okay. So. And so for um, let's say you're going to play 18 holes. Um, how many of your drives, you're going to hit your driver probably 14 times because the other two four holes are par threes. What uh, percentage or how many drives stay in the fairway out of 14? Out of 14, maybe th three to five, and the rest are off in the rough, or uh, I tend to hit very high, so mm -hmm. it might get lost in some trees, and um, you know, I'll be hitting a punch shot on my second shot. Okay, so some scrambling right off the tee starts to cost you some strokes. So yep. if you could get uh, if you could up that percentage to even uh, six, seven, eight, something like that, drives that are playable, then that could probably take your handicap down and two or three, two, maybe even four points. Yeah, okay. I, I think so. Okay. So uh, I already have your information in, the, in my iPad. I always use this to take some video. We've got your information in the HD, and that way I can send you some videos so that you can refer back to what we're doing. But, but I'll explain what we're doing as we go along. Okay. So if you would um, hit a shot. There we go, regular full swing. And probably the best drive we'll hit today. <laughs> Went straight. And so you did say that you, you do hit some shots that are pretty straight. You have some that you're happy with. Yeah. And so one of the things that we look at here is club path. Okay. And on HD, there's, a, there's an O and there's an I. And the O stands for outside in. The I stands for inside out. And okay. so that has to do with if you're outside in, you're swinging left or the, the path that you're cutting taking. Cutting through it. Yep, cutting through it. And then the club face angle tells us where your club face is at impact. So if your club face was completely square to the target, that number would be zero. Okay. And so the lower the number on either of these, the better. And the closer those two numbers are together, the less curvature you have. So why don't you hit another shot for me? I always like to have several shots to look at before we start making changes. Okay. That one seemed to curve a little bit more, but mm -hmm. not as so far. pretty pretty consistent. And so we have the outside in is beginning to creep up just a little bit more. Yep. So a couple more degrees outside in. So and the face stayed pretty much um, where it was. The yeah. other thing that we see is your where you hit it. So it's showing that you have a heel hit, heel. which is on the inside. And typically when you hit it on the heel depending on what the face is doing. So if that was an open face, this says 1.4 degrees closed. If it was open and you hit it on the heel, we're going to start seeing more side Some spin. Some slice, mm -hmm. which is probably something we would see if I hit, you know, more. So okay. and it says you have a slight draw. Your club head speed is 96.9 
miles per hour. So let's let's hit another one. I want you to add, uh, if you can, some speed to it. All right. So you've hit, you've been on the course. You've hit a couple of drives. You're feeling pretty good. You're ready to outdrive your buddies. So let's. Oh, let's see here it. we go. This is where I'll outdrive them left to right. <laughs> There we go. There's the fade slice. Mm -hmm. And that's still most of the time going to be in the fairway. Yeah. But we want to see how the numbers changed. Right rough. Playable, but not fairway there. Mm -hmm. So we go here to shot data. And so we've got on that time, just as I was saying before, your, your club face is open. And it's a heel hit. So you did have 107.9 miles per hour. Still not too bad, but maybe back up just a little bit so we can get a center hit. Ooh, that felt awful. Okay, so that was <laughs> that was one of the shots that you talked about. Yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. Taking a drop. So the face is was really open on that one. Wide open. And so that's gonna account for 85% of direction is where the club face is at impact. And so you're you maintained a higher club head speed. The speed was there. <laughs> Big miss. <laughs> so we're going to also, we're going to go back and we're going to look at your setup. And so I like your setup there. Your ball placement is inside your left heel, just a, you know, an inch or two. Uh, your left shoulder is higher than the right, so that means that your upper body is behind the ball. So that's, that's a good setup. You have a little bit wider with the feet. So then let's look at the swing. Nice transition there. As we look at the shot, it looks a little bit as if when you got to that point Some that you, sto you stood up a little bit. Yeah. Can you kind of see that? Yeah. Kind of stood up, nice extension through the ball, and, and a really great finish. So we're looking here. When you hit, what caused it to go to the right is, do you see how your hands are ahead of the ball? So with a drive, we want the club head and your hands to line up. You can see that you, you release the club. Your right hand is over your left, which is what we do to straighten out the ball flight. But we wanna, we wanna speed those hands up a little bit through impact because you're, when you came in, your hands sort of won that race between the club head and the hands. Uh, okay. The other thing we look at is, you see the horizontal angle. It, it, if we show it up here. Yep. It's a negative number. So that's showing that you're hitting down on the ball. And when you hit down on the ball, it goes up. So that's how we want to hit an iron. For a driver, we want that to be a positive number because we want to hit on what's called the upstroke. Okay. So your setup is good, but as you're coming in, we gotta you gotta stay behind it. You gotta keep that right shoulder staying here instead of getting forward of the ball. All right, let's see if I can Correct some of that. What did you think of that one? The swing felt better, the contact felt better, mm -hmm. and kind of went a straight. I just kind of aimed a bit, right? Yeah, it, it, very high ball flight there. If we look at your club face and your path, that's the best path and club face you've had today. So that O switched to an I. Okay. So, so you swung inside out with an open or a uh, square face, 0 0.7. We're still hitting it on the heel though a little bit. Heel. And the, uh, the launch angle is 20.1, which is a little bit too high. For a okay. driver, we want to see that somewhere between 13 and 15. Okay. So what I would do, put you in a different driver. Let's start with the paradigm and See, it's a, also the same flex that you've been using. And that club is designed to work on lowering that, that spin rate. It's um, more forgiving across the face. And for the viewers at home, what um, flex should they be hitting? What so, determines So that? club head speed. So okay. your club head speed goes anywhere from, say, 100 to 107. I have a a Mizuno 
shaft over there, it's a DNA optimizer. I might start thinking about putting you in an extra stiff shaft. Okay. Because you're almost to there, you're close to 100, you know, past 100, so like 110-ish. If you're right around 100 most of the time, then I would probably say stiff. Okay. And if you're in the 90s, that would be a regular. Well, there's different, uh, there's usually ladies, A-flex, and then there's regular, then there's um, stiff, and then there's extra stiff. So okay. the higher the club head speed, the heavier club shaft you need. Yep. Okay, I just figured that's something that I, I know a lot of golfers kind of ask themselves, right? The, the average golfer who's not getting fitted and, mm -hmm. um, but should I just hit another? Yeah, go ahead and try that. Here? See what you think of that one. didn't feel like the heel that time. Uh-huh. It was a little bit on the heel, just a slight slight amount. Good club head speed. Um, I like the, the height that we got, 15.9. 15, yeah. So it wasn't a balloon shot. And your path and face were perfect. 0, 0.0. Uh-huh. Yep. So then I'm going to have you try the Stealth Plus 2. Woo! Snap. There's the one <laughs> to the left I said happens <laughs> every now and then. We, went, we haven't seen that yet today, so let's look and see what happened. Again, the, the, it, the closed face. And, and because you're inside out, but do you notice how that went up? Your, your inside or your path? Yeah. It went to a higher level. So you've got, just to give, give people a visual, so what that's saying is that you swung... Um, so if you if you swung the club straight down the line here, your path would be zero. Okay. But your path was 3.9, so you swung four degrees to the right. Okay. And then when you came in, your club face was 10 degrees. And so the difference between those two is what causes curvature. So if you had if your club face say had been four degrees, you would have been there. You would have had a straighter shot. So the curvature, when that path and that face get further and further apart, that's when you have that curvature. So if I'm going to go in to out, mm -hmm. I do want my club face also a bit open. You want it to go yet that way, yes. The same way. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you want to hit uh, a, a again. slight draw, then the club face would be slightly closed to the path. And doing that kind of feels scary. It feels like I'm aiming off to the right woods if I'm hitting that way with the club face pointing that way, but mm -hmm. it will create the draw that we love to see on TV, huh? Woo! That was nice. Did you like that one? Yeah. Was it a little bit too curvy for you? It did what we were trying to do. I just tried aiming the face with the inside out. And notice your horizontal angle. It's not as negative. The, yep. And so that means that you hit just slightly down on it, which is fine. Slightly, yeah. So in other words, you hit it a little bit, a little bit like an iron as far as hitting down. That number has been getting better since we talked about it. The path and the face are a little bit too far apart, which again, when you looked at that shot, it was just, it was okay, but it, it, it was yeah. a little curvy. Maybe not um, what you want. Your club head speed, though, is pretty consistent. All right, well, thanks so much for the time. Thank you. And in conclusion, if you were to say, okay, Jared, I want you to walk away with a club, which one would it be based on the stats and the numbers? I would put you into the extra stiff flex and I, the paradigm, the regular paradigm, this one, has the flexibility of the of the slider and I think that that one will give you the most consistency based on the technology that has and it's a, a club that's built for your swing. Awesome well thank you and I think we're gonna head out to the range and kind of work on some spring tune-up. Okay sounds great. All right let's All do right, it. Let's do it. Hey everyone stick around we'll be right back after these messages.
We're at the driving range, and uh, we're going to work today on some uh, a spring tune-up. Okay. Just kind of getting warmed up before your first round of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, tell us how to uh, kind of approach a proper warm-up. Okay. So a proper warm-up doesn't start with a driver. It's going to start with a wedge. And you want to use, you can use any of your wedges. It doesn't have to be the highest lofted wedge, but just one of your wedges. And what you're trying to do is get your timing, your rhythm, and your tempo. And so if you, all, if you start with a driver, that also could cause some injury because you're swinging at your highest club head speed. So what you want to do is just pick a target. And I, as you're doing that, I'm going to check your aim and alignment. So aim and alignment is always one of those things that is mystifying sometimes on the course it, when you have to not aim straight, maybe aim at something angled. So walk through your process to aim. So what, what process do you go on the course? I try and line the ball to the target to kind of just draw a straight line through it. Mm -hmm. So I see where, I see the red bucket and I see something right in front of it like this that's in line with it. Okay. And So you I, aim your club face first? Um, I think I tip, oh yeah, I guess I haven't thought of it. Um, sometimes I do this and line it up and then try and see where what feels comfortable for my feet. Okay. So and when you when you're lined up, just tell me that you're lined up and just stay there in your stance. And then I'm gonna come over and check your alignment. So Okay. Let me know when you're ready. I am in my stance. Okay. So we have two parts to alignment. One is the club face. So it's we have uh, parallel lines here so that's that's your club face direction. And you stay in your stance. Go ahead and stay in your stance. And then we have your feet. Okay, so come back here. I'll take your club and you come back behind me and tell me if you're aimed at the bucket. It looks right of the bucket. Mm hmm. So, what something that I would suggest is maybe just a little different process, which is I like how you come back here and you draw a line through uh, the ball to the target so that you, you're cueing your brain to hit the ball somewhere. Yep. So then I'll trade places with you. So you come back this way. So I would come up here, club face first. Keep your body out of it, put your feet together. Get your club face first. Does it look like I'm aiming at the bucket? Yes. And then your feet, starting with your toes, need to be parallel to your club face line. Okay. So you have starting with your toes, your knees, your quads, and then more, uh, most importantly too, is the shoulders. So if I'm somebody who slices the ball a lot, then I probably am lining up with open shoulders to the target, or my shoulders are left of where I'm trying to go. The other, the opposite is someone will line their shoulders too far to the right. And so this actually causes a hook. Open shoulders actually causes a slice. So sometimes you have to check your setup to know if you're starting off with your, your alignment to hit the shot that you want. So try that process where you do your club face first. Maybe put the feet together just to keep the, keep the body out of it. Yeah, so then your feet need to be parallel to that club face line. Maybe so that, so your, your body and your feet are actually going to always be left of your target. And then the other thing is I'm gonna check your shoulders. So I wanna see if your shoulders, go ahead and stay in your posture. I wanna see if your shoulders are parallel. So let's just kind of move your body a little bit like that. Mm -hmm. So you have that your body is parallel. So now go ahead and hit. Probably feels a little awkward because it's different. Much better. So when you're starting out, you want to check how your, what your process is. That's one of your go-tos when you're starting a season and you also want to check your aim and alignment. You can set a club down. A lot of players when they're practicing They'll, um, you know, they'll set a club down to help them with alignment. 
Okay. Um, you could do a club, you could do an alignment stick, you could do a, a dowel from Home Depot, um, just so that you have something to help you with it. Yeah, so just like a club right in front there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do the club. Yep. Nice. Get in the bucket. Okay, so that's that's one very important thing is aim and alignment, and this is this is for a new golfer or someone who's been playing for a long time. Another another thing that you can do is, as we talked about, is go through all the clubs. So you start with the the shortest one and you work your way up. Now you don't want to do the same kind of practice every time you go out. So another practice that I like to do is just to start aiming at different targets, kind of add to that so that you're not on the range just aiming straight. So actually trying to put the ball somewhere. Well, thanks for having us today. I think you gave us a lot of great tips here at the range for us to use in our pre-round warm-ups. It was a great spring tune-up and I look forward to using it out on my next round. Okay, thank you. Good luck with everything. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in and special thanks to Paula Ketchum and everyone here at Lacoma Golf Course. We'll catch you next time, off the tee. Give it a minute.